Alrighty, welcome to today's 3D print. This is part two of my end of three review where I go over the problems and the solutions. So, Ender 3. I'm still waiting for my other two Enders to arrive from Creality Direct. This one I pre ordered through Smarty Store. And um, this was a beta batch of printers that they put out there. I paid for these, but you know, there was a, a test run to see what problems they encountered. So in this video, I'm going to go over a whole bunch of those problems with you and um, hopefully give feedback to Creality so that they can continue to improve the printer. Um, I'm really excited about both Creality and TiVo, where they both appear to be taking seriously the feedback and criticisms from the community regarding their printers and actually making iterative improvements to their printers. I also appear to be getting positive feedback from TiVo that they will be incorporating some corrections into their printers, and that is absolutely fantastic if they do that. And they are both in GPL compliance, which is wonderful. Um, so next I'm going to show you some test prints. You're going to hear me talk about a lot of stuff for all of this printer. Keep in mind, uh, this is constructive criticism. The idea is for them to get as much information as they can to improve these printers. So. I'm not saying the printer's bad, but of course there are a bunch of issues, and you want to fix those issues if possible, especially if they're easy. And this will also help you guys correct some of these issues. So stay tuned. First up, I'm going to show you a bunch of the different prints I made with it, and then I made individual video clips as I was working on the printer over the last week. So there might be jump cuts where I go from one topic to another, and I just put them all together into one video here for you to watch about 25 minutes long. So you can go with me and see the kind of feedback I'm giving Creality. So I hope Creality will also watch this video and take some of this feedback to heart and make the printer better. Stay tuned. Oh, one thing I forgot to add to the video for Creality. I would like you to make the heat bed one millimeter thicker if possible. I love the fact that you got the relatively flat heat bed so that you don't need a glass plate. That really lightens up the inertial mass of the bed so it's not so heavy. But it's right on the edge, especially if you're going to be running this thing hot at 100 degrees plus. Um, I would like to see that heat bed be just one millimeter thicker. I think the extra weight would be worth the extra stiffness and resilience so that, that plate doesn't warp over time. I mean, I could always add a glass plate later, but then you lose the advantage of that ultra lightweight bed. So that might be something to consider. Um, you might also want to consider a thicker but aluminum Y carriage. Um, you probably couldn't use the same thickness, but you might be able to get away with, say, 25% thicker. And by making aluminum, make it even lighter. But that might not be necessary. I think you get into, um, you'd recover some inertial mass and lower noise, but I think you're getting into noise territory there, so it might not be necessary at all. Um, one thing I do suggest is making the bolts that go through the bearings thicker. Um, beef them up a little bit if you can. Um, something to maybe make the, the nuts larger. Something to, to make sure that those wheels on their posts can't bend because they want to bend. They're under a lot of stress so they tend to try to bend. Um, so something to beef that up a little bit if you can. And go back to the yellow compression springs. They work a lot better. Stay tuned! Prints from the Ender 3. This is the first print using CC Tree. Uh, fluorescent green. It's the dog. It's actually not a bad print. A little tiny bit over extruded, but overall very good quality. Um, and this uh, I could tell by the way it was running that this was sliced with Cura. I did a Benji, Marvin, Vase. Not bad. My new style maker coin, six millimeters thick. I like it a lot better like that. It just feels more coin like. It's cool. But I also did. Uh, Maker Geeks Raptor PLA. Uh, I did PETG. Um, who makes this PETG? Polymaker Polylite PETG. And then this is ABS. Cheap no name ABS. Printed at 260, 245, I believe, and 245. I also did one of my nose cones in ABS, and there's some cracking. Uh, apparently ABS doesn't like doing hollow objects, so wherever the shift is from 
hollow to not hollow. It tended to want to crack. I cracked this after I took it off the bed. I squeezed it and it cracked. And um, so I might have to do ABS nose cones with all infill, but less of it. I don't know. I mean, the, the cone itself feels strong. It just seems wherever it changes infill is where it wants to crack for some reason. I'm not entirely sure why. This is printed at 260. Stuck to the bed, no problem. Did not try to peel up off the bed at all. Actually, it was pretty hard to remove from the bed. Um, but overall, not bad. I'm impressed. The printer easily reaches 100 degrees. It struggles to get to 110, but it will get there. Um, it's pretty cool in this house right now, 60 degrees. But um, it did eventually reach 108, 110, and it, it does reach 100 pretty effectively, pretty authoritatively. But yeah, PETG, high temp PLA, PLA, ABS, <gasps> no problem. Now I'm printing some filamentum noble blue. Another flexi rex. I love me my flexi rexes. And is it? Oh yeah, I also did this in PETG. Not bad. Not bad at all. You notice I get rid of those patterns. Those patterns were because um, these were too tight, trying to compensate for the one being tilted. So once I fixed the tilted one. I was able to tighten them properly. The bed moves smoothly now, no more problems. I also did measure the distance between the gantry top and bottom, and they are identical, which means this is correct, and that there was something wrong with the base on the bottom that was causing these to push outward. This corrected that, so that's not an issue. Uh, otherwise, it's running great, not giving me any serious problems. I did, well, you already saw I installed the back on there. I got a segment of the video coming up about that. But now I'm going to go over the printer with you guys, the problems I encountered and possible fixes. Little updates on the Ender 3. Um, these are feedback suggestions for Creality. I know this was their first batch of printers and they're looking for suggestions on improving. I love the knobs, they are wonderful. But they do have one major problem. The screws here through the bed are able to turn. So these screws need to be locked down to the bed. I'm going to attempt to put nuts on them and lock them down. Because what happens is when these get a little tighter, instead of turning the knob and making it move up and down, it just spins the whole screw. Okay, so that's a problem. Um, but I think if I just put a nut on there, that'll fix that problem. Now, another problem I have is this. Uh, one of mine was crooked, which caused the entire bed to want to do this, actually that. Um, so that was not working correctly. I don't like this rhombus setup. Um, this is good, equilateral triangle, but I think this permits it to push on this. So if these aren't tightened right, this whole bed is going to want to do... If you tighten this one up too much, all you do is make this tighter because it's an equilateral triangle, so these kind of balance out. But if you over-tighten this one, or if this one is torqued at all, it's going to cause the whole bed to want to do this, which is going to pull this wheel away from the rail and push this wheel into the rail. So, um, I'm not sure how to fix that. My, I'm not an engineer, so I could be wrong, but my gut tells me line these wheels up. So put this one over here and put this one over here, so that these two wheels line up with each other, so that over-tightening one wheel simply pushes it harder into the other wheel and doesn't attempt to torque the entire bed. Um, I think that torquing is what bent the one wheel, which made the bed level unreliable. Um, otherwise, nice, good, thick plate. I like that. I got no issues with that. It looks nice. I like this slot-in um, attachment method. Same thing on the hot end. Fantastic. I like that method. It's very good. Um, I'm not thrilled by the hot end cooling, but it does work. I haven't had any underhand cooling issues, so I'm going to chalk that up to it works, leave it alone. Um, another problem I had was that these rails were not drilled properly into the bed. I don't know if it's the holes in these that were improper. I doubt that. So it's more likely the holes in the actual unit or the lengths were wrong. I had to physically force this rail this way in order to mount the bolts through the top here. So it's possible the holes in this were drilled wrong or this was cocked out. Um, I'll have to put a square on it and see if it's actually square or not. But that was something I had to do in order to assemble this. In order to make this, the holes on this line up with this, I had to force this arm in and then I had to force it in again in order to put that on it. 
Um, I love the ABS part here. This is great. I would love to see you guys switch over to the optical end stops like TiVo is using. Just rip it off of them. I mean, it's probably, I doubt it's proprietary, but non-moving parts for here would be nice. That would improve the longevity of it. Um, if it's possible, I would like to see this um, positioned a little differently. Or if possible, switch out to a full-size SD card. But if you can't switch out to a full-size SD card, I don't know. I would like to put some kind of adapter on here. I mean, this it's not bad. Or if also possible, it might be better to actually take this and mount it upside down in here. So that the SD card slot is at the top instead of the bottom. Because this can be a little tricky. Especially for us big fat fingered Americans. This can be a little tricky for us to get that SD card in there. If it was up here, it'd be a lot easier. So maybe take the whole board and flip it over 180 degrees so it's on the top of the case instead of the bottom of the case. That would also satisfy another problem I have, cooling fan. I would like to see small feet under the printer, like substantial feet, like that tall, lifting the printer up off the ground and put that cooling fan on the bottom because this is just screaming, suck in all the dust that comes near the, that comes near the printer. So that's going to be a dust magnet, I think. So I would think having it underneath would give it less direct access to the dust and debris that might fall in there. Also, um, the electrical board is here. The opening is here. So um, small things might be able to fall through the fan and short out the board. So flipping the whole thing over would solve both the SD card on the bottom problem because now it would be on top. And it would solve the fan being exposed problem. So to do that, all you would have to do is put four feet under the printer, mount this upside down so it's on top here like this, and that would put the SD card and a USB over here, which would be perfect, and then the fan could be on the bottom. And I think that would be better. Or have the fan on the side. You know, have just inlet grills on the bottom and the fan on the side. That would give you the best of both worlds. It wouldn't be sucking up dust from the table, but it also wouldn't be sucking up things that fall into it from top. Um, I'd like to see some neatness for this. I'm going to try 3D printing it, but maybe a channel or something that could reside in. Also, I would like to see a, a, a back for this, an enclosure, because I'm worried about you know things touching whatever's on the back here, because this is just an exposed circuit board here. Having that enclosed would be nice. This, by the way, awesome. I absolutely love this mounted here. I call it a, a Micro G Max. It's kind of what it looks like. It looks like a little Micro G Max. Um, I see you've improved the quality of your fans. They're all quieter. The noisiest fan now is in the power supply. So maybe source a better quality fan for that or a better quality power supply. Uh, but so far, it's working great. I'm just going to replace the fan with a Noctua fan. Um, let's see what other issues I have. A uh, little QC issue. All of the primary bolts holding here, here, and here were loose. I had to tighten all of them, all six of them I had to tighten. So that's something you might want to check out in QC and make sure those get properly tightened. Also, please, for the love of God, replace these bolts. These are such garbage bolts. The wrench only just barely fits in this socket, and you can see it's not even a proper fit. These strip so easily. I'm already halfway stripped through one of them. These are like, look at that. These are like the crappiest bolts money can buy. Replace these bolts with something with a, with a better cut and a deeper socket so these wrenches will actually fit um that that's just bad 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 bolts i noticed a lot of your bolts were replaced with hardened bolts i'd like to see you continue to do that get rid of all these cheap silver chrome low quality bolts and continue to replace them with either cap um bolts like this or the higher quality hardened bolts that i see you using at different places on the printer fantastic continue those iterative upgrades i really love seeing you guys continue to improve the printer um i think some of the bearings in here might be a little shot actually they kind of feel okay turning them um because i i could feel the bed you know judder as it's printing and you can see that artifact in the print there it is see that artifact i'm pretty sure that artifact right there which is not here see at least to less of an amount. I'm pretty sure that artifact is a bearing. So one of the bearings in here is a little janky. And it's going, you know, and each time it does that, one rotation, 
I'm willing to bet that the spacing of that bearing there is a multiple of the revolutions of one of these bearings. Um, otherwise, fantastic. Um, maybe um, install dampers on the X and Y stepper motors because they are a bit noisy. It's not a big deal, but now that you've done such a good job quieting up your fans, you can really hear those steppers. But it's not bad. Otherwise, good job. Um, I'm concerned about this H configuration and how stiff it'll be, but, I mean, so far, this printer is proving to be pretty stiff. I mean, it's not giving me any indication that it wants to flex, so good job on that. It's nice and stiff, so it should be. I love the infinitely adjustable end stop, so this can slide up and down. Fantastic. Good job. I guess I should make sure that stuff's not visible. But yeah, otherwise, I'm impressed. This is turning out fantastic. You guys are doing a good job. I hope to see continuing improvements. All right, I don't have any washers, so to solve my loose bed problem, it's M4. So I put a piece of tape on there, and then an M4 bolt, which I will, or nut, which I will tighten down. And that will tighten down the bolt here for the bed, so that it will stop moving, which will allow these to work properly without turning the entire construct. That's a temporary fix. One more problem with the printer. This cable unit that attaches here and then comes down here to the unit, it is too short. I didn't quite go all the way to vertical and this is already too tight. You can see I actually had to push this cable in a little more because what happens is the bed, see how it grabs it? Both the bed and the knob wheel down here can snag on that cable. And that would cause a skip if it snagged harder. If that was up a little bit higher and that cable was a little tighter. So what needs to happen is this cable needs to be about two inches longer and then it needs to be pinned. So there needs to be a little, little something right here for this cable to attach right here to make sure this cable is held out of the way of the path of this because otherwise that's eventually going to damage something so um yeah beyond that i haven't found too many other major issues i also replaced the springs with the cr10 style springs i'd like to see you guys go back to those because these suck um they're round wire so they tend to want to pivot and also, they tend to want to dig into whatever they're pushed up against. The flat wires or the flat springs are just much more stable. So I'd, I'd go back to the compression springs if I were you guys. Unless there was an engineering reason for why you use these, I'm not sure what it could be. Um, as you can see, I got my nuts installed, and the flat spring sits perfectly right on top of the nut. It doesn't tend to want to push to the side. Another benefit of the flat spring. And so now, when I adjust the knob. It actually adjusts the knob instead of turning the entire screw, which you can't even get to because it's underneath your print surface here. So, there, and nut, put a, a fiber washer in here and a nut, and then use the flat compression springs. Go back to that, and you'll be good to go. And also, um, now that I straightened out this um, one post here that was tilted, looks like it's straight now. I took it apart and reassembled it, and now the bed slides much more smoothly. I don't feel that that duh, duh, duh movement there before, so that fixed that. I'm not sure how you could repair that. Um, maybe a thicker bolt through here, or just better QC when it's being assembled, but definitely replace those bolts with something a little more substantial. I, I personally would go with a cap screw. You know, go with that kind of a bolt because you're not going to hit nothing. You see, you got plenty of clearance here, so I'd replace those bolts with this kind of a, a bolt. In fact, I might do exactly that. I gotta get some longer ones because right now that is the longest I have, and I don't think it's long enough. So maybe it is. I'll have to check. Yeah, I'll play with that later. But go with that kind of a screw, and in fact, go with this kind of screw, this better quality hardened steel screw. Use that there. That'll hold up a lot better. Another problem I'm having is the X gantry. I suspect the problem I'm having with this X gantry is a result of this not being correct. Remember when I was telling you how I had to push this in in order to slide this on 
and in order to attach this I suspect this arm is pushing too hard out against these wheels I had to loosen this all the way you can see this is almost completely loose down here almost well, tight here but it's loose up here that's interesting but this has a definite play see it stays down it stays up there's definite play there and I suspect it's because it's too tight this is really really tight up against here like right now it's pushing out against this wheel and this wheel is very very tight um, and these wheels are loose I can spin them by hand as you can see let me try loosening that up a little bit that's not helping oh they're a little bit better bite not much though no yeah when it's up this wheels <laughs> when it's up this wheels tight when it's down this wheels tight so this is making it very difficult to level the bed because well this changes it moves and I'm not sure how to fix that these bolts are tight but obviously not tight enough so I might have to play with that the consequences of the way that they assemble this thing is that those two bolts right there are what holds the vertical trolley onto the X carriage. Or actually, I should say, holds the X carriage onto the vertical trolley. This piece here being the vertical trolley that contains the X motor and the extruder motor. Now, I suspect those were the problem. The instructions said to use washers, so I did. Now, these are bolts that they've replaced with hardened bolts. Those are hardened steel bolts. Those are much, much better quality than those kind of bolts there. Um, and these kind of bolts here. They're junk. I'd like to see them replace all these silver bolts with these nice hardened steel bolts. I can't imagine it would add more than a dollar to the price of the kit. Um... I took out the washer. I was able to actually grab the trolley and the arm and twist them and it was actually able to shift so I would like to see better tolerances for the arm and maybe a third hole maybe put three bolts through it uh, maybe make this arm a hair bigger somehow if you can I don't even oh yeah there's room here nothing would hit it see the trolley misses so have this arm maybe come out to here and have a third bolt through it but I got rid of the washers and I was able to seriously torque them down and now I cannot bend this arm. It does not move anymore. So I think the washers were simply preventing me from getting a proper pinch. So it was allowing, it was actually act, 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 acting as a slip. Getting rid of them seemed to solve that. So I also got rid of them down there. We shall see how that goes. Now, the part of the problem I had was that um, this these two arms do not properly line up with this arm. So if you put these two bolts in here, they do not line up. You can actually see it, see? They do not line up. Let me screw this in a little bit so it'll stay put. So here, those are now in, and you can see these do not line up. I have to physically push this this way like this to get those to fall into line into their holes okay so either this arm's the wrong size I'm going to take some measurements and see if that's the case or these the frame down here is tweaked outward which is tilting the arms outward so this doesn't line up um, I'm gonna to have to measure it I'll have to take a measurement here and here here and here to see which is the problem but either these are not straight up and down or this isn't quite long enough and I suspect that is what is preventing this from cruising correctly let's check it out while we're here all right if this fits perfectly without the arm in place See, that seems to ride pretty nice. I don't get an indication that there's a problem. Although it's definitely not riding clean. It's riding dirty. I can feel it, you know, dut, 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 dut. 
Yeah, see, it's too tight. I don't think that's supposed to be that tight. Now let's see if this now fits more correctly. Oh yeah, yep. Okay, so the beam is the correct size, I suspect, because now you notice they're sitting about where they're supposed to sit. I just have to tweak them a tiny bit to get them to line up. So they almost line up naturally. So it looks like these arms are tilting out. That could be an inconsistency in the way this is assembled here. Like maybe this is not true. Um, not entirely sure. I'll have to look at it and see if I can figure it out. But it's possible that um, this beam down here is a hair too small. Um, or hair too wide, actually. It would, be, it would be too wide, which would push this arm out. But when I put this on, it pulls the arms together. But this ride's dirty. i got to figure out which bearing is dirty. I can feel it. A, um, it's a bad bearing. One of the bearings is bad. But it also might be too much pressure. This might be pushing out too hard and bottoming out one of the bearings. Well, it's much better, but if I apply enough force, I am still able to make this arm move. So the holes for these bolts are too loose, and they are allowing this arm to pivot relative to the vertical trolley. Um, I can probably show you. There it goes, see? See how the arm itself is pivoting? And that is no good. You do not want that arm pivoting. It's tighter now, but it's, and I'm afraid to tighten that anymore because this is aluminum it's being screwed into. I tighten that too much, it's going to strip it. So I really think you need a third point. I think you need to extend this bracket a little further out here with a third bolt right here. Um, you got away with it on the ender, with being cantilevered, but now that you actually have force being applied on this end, um, it's causing it to drag, and that is no good. Um, yeah, you need three bolts. You need three bolts here. Somehow, some way, you gotta get three bolts. I would just extend this um, metal out here like this. Have a, a, link, a wing pop out here. And then a third bolt right here. I think three bolts would do it. And that would prevent that shifting from occurring. Um, not how sure how else I can fix that. Um, I may try to drill a hole straight through here, but I don't like being so close to these other two bolt holes. We shall see. Just printed some pet G, and it's not bad. I need to adjust, but not bad. One problem. Yeah. This print surface is actually very nice. It's a, it's a more textured version of the surface they include with their other printers, and it's a little too good, at least with Pet G, because it ripped a chunk out of it. So, that's something to be careful with. Um, Pet G is difficult to remove from this print surface. Sticks very good. It's the easiest to print Pet G surface I've ever used, but large surface area, be careful. One of the things that the Ender 3 needs is a cover for the back of this, because the circuit board's exposed here, and it's probably not the greatest idea. So, someone on Thingiverse already did it. Here is a nice little cover. I did some natural PLA on my Michelangelo. Since I was printing a cat on this one. Sneak peek. Big cat. <laughs> um, so I printed out the cover. And now this cover will go on the back side of this. So one moment while I take it apart. See, it just sits right on top of there. So I'm thinking I can use the existing screws that came with it. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to pop those screws out and try screwing this in. There we go. Cover is installed. I, is that bent? I think that's bent. I did have to dig into my spares here. I needed um, two M38s and two M316s. Eights here, 16s here, in order to pass through. Um, so you're not going to be able to use the original bolts. This could probably be modified to use the original bolts. I'm not sure. It would be an overhang here. And it would be weaker, so... Probably better just to replace the hardware, but yeah, there you go. Now it's got a nice little cover, so nothing will short out on that, and that's where the wire goes.